morning it's uh north carolina about 80 degrees on a saturday we've got a load of square bale hay coming uh tell you a bit about the way i manage hay in my barn so this is my uh, hay storage area i'll back up so you can see the front of the barn i don't uh this is a new barn we built this barn in 2018 finished up in 2018 so i went back and forth quite a bit for about a year or so chewing on designs and what do i want to do do i want a monitor style barn which i really like the way they look those old amish looking monitor barns are pretty cool uh, and have a hayloft and put a staircase in because i did not want a ladder and go that route um, or do it this way and then with my hay on the ground um, so my my barn is a uh, 60 by 36 i'm sorry a 48 by 30 my barn is a 36 by 36 four stall a four, 12 by 14 um, tack room and a 12 by 10 wash bay i put two more feet in my tack room and tightened up my wash bay uh, a couple feet which was a good tip i got from a guy because you don't need a 12 by 12 wash bay uh, but that two feet in your tack room makes a huge difference but anyway back to hay so then um this is my hay storage area you can just, I'm five foot eight. I can walk right in here, grab bales, no problem. I have to do a minimal amount of climbing to get to the top, which normally just means I'm stepping on a bale to reach that top bale to pull it down. And uh, the reason I went this way is I know uh, I'm not young now and I know one day I'll be old. And I don't want to be climbing steps and messing with hay lofts and, and I hate hay elevators. I've seen those uh, run on different places and I guess it's fine, but um it's just a pain i didn't want so i wanted my hay on the ground didn't want it up top and uh so that's what i did and so far it has worked out really good my storage capacity here is about 300 ish bales i've never really done a tight analysis to understand exactly how many bales i can put in here but um uh, so and this year the way that we fed and and the way that we managed our horses was different than previous years you know we, we used to put them up every night winter summer didn't matter the season they went in their stalls every night and this year we went to a different approach to that and we leave our horses turned out quite a bit uh, this time of year when the pasture is really really coming on strong uh, they can get a little bit too much forage so you know I, I put them up in the paddock at night and uh and keep them off uh, keep them off forage at night and then I turn them back out in the morning but I'm not putting them in the stalls much at all and uh which means that you know I'm not feeding hardly any square bales and i still do round bells in the winter time uh, and that's worked all right but uh long and short of that is i still have uh, quite a bit of hay left from last year probably about 200 bales so i only have about 100 bales coming and keep in mind i have three horses i have uh two quarter horses well one of them's an appendix pretty much same thing and the other one is a little mini both my horses are are just over 15 hands and uh around thousand ish 1100 pounds uh best guess and uh so just to give you a sense of uh, what I'm feeding in terms of how many, what I would need from a uh, bale consumption perspective. So I'm keeping an eye out for the hay guy and here he comes. So be right back. So hay guy's gone. There's a barn cat up there on top. Uh, got my hundred bales, put them in there. No problem. That's a joke. Yeah, it's a serious problem every time I do it. I mean, I'm older, it, uh, it's, it's not easy, but they're in there barn is almost full i got about another 75 bales on order that i'll get from him in another month or so uh, after i have time to recover from this physical abuse today of putting 100 bales up but um but anyway so this this is a year's worth um as it stands and i'll take on that little bit more just in case and i, I may moderate my round bales this fall or this winter <clears throat> not do as many you know uh, and sling more square out for them during the cold months just to start to work through some of this hay that i got last year too so uh anyway that's a easy quick little talk about hay and what i do i'll show you the the feeder that i use in my paddock now my paddock is connected to my pasture so my paddock comes that's my pasture out there um and my paddock comes in there's a small gate down there in the bottom there's jasper and he's always the curious one so he's got to know what's happening and uh isn't he pretty you know I, i'll tell you i was a sucker for how pretty he was but he he can be a jerk but uh anyway got distracted so this paddock comes into here right into my barn with these dutch doors 
So I tried to do this to make it easy on people that uh, had less comfort or less experience with horses to turn them in and uh, and or do, to do turn in and, and turn out. So, uh, and it works pretty good. They know, they know their stalls. Uh, they'll come on in as long as you jingle some, some grain around, even when they're kind of being ornery about it, they'll generally come on in their stall. Uh, that one right there always has the top door closed. That's because that's hoppers, our mini. And uh, you, you wouldn't believe it, but he has jumped out of the top of that that stall before and I, I wouldn't have never believed it but i watched him do it one time and uh i think i might have video of it somewhere but uh if i do i find it i'll put it up here but but anyway back to this so then there's that there's the hay feeder right there i got last year from southern states and i just kind of like that it keeps it off the ground and uh works pretty good uh, the waste doesn't seem to be as much and i have always been just putting out round bales on the ground in my pasture uh, and <clears throat> in the winter time of course and and you get so much spoilage with that i bet i lose a fourth of every one uh, to spoilage so I, i'm i'm not going to do that this year uh, oh and it makes a mess right because you got all that thick matted hay that that starts to decompose and it gets all together like a cake and you can't hardly get it out of your pasture and i end up having to take the loader or, or something else up there and trying to push it out and get it out i really think a root grapple would work pretty good to get it out but i don't own one not yet anyway so uh then i have to put all that spoil spoilage hay somewhere and that becomes a problem too <clears throat> so uh anyway this year i'm gonna i'm gonna get a round bell feeder uh either i'm gonna do one of those um hay huts which are pretty pricey and i have to make sure hopper as short as he is that he can get in there or i'm gonna do some other kind of uh, metal feeder that kind of cont contains the round bale more keeps them from dragging it around so much and uh, and put that out there for them so so we'll see just some other little things of interest around here this is a horrible crappy area that i never get seated when i want to in the fall maybe i'll hit that this year kind of up the hill right here was a you know a concrete pad that was there when we bought this place and uh, and my wife had the idea of hey let's turn that into a some sort of neat sitting area because it's always shady and cool so anyway we had some leftover brick uh, from the house that we built <clears throat> and then i bought some rock and so i'm up here kind of working as i can doing it myself and i'm i'm not a mason but uh that's all right and um so we'll we'll have a a brick and and kind of flagstone sitting area up there one of these days uh to put up there so one of the cool things about rural living, you can kind of look at some things and, you know, come up with some ideas and, and do it. It doesn't have to uh, be approved by anyone or anything. And it's your place, your land, you can do what you want to. Uh, another little interesting thing up here, interesting to me is, if I'm doing it right, it's hard to see. There's a, an old cast iron tub that, um, that used to be out here and was a cattle feeder. This used to be a beef, uh, beef farm. Uh, long time ago and I found that thing in the woods brought it up with the loader and uh, my wife has an idea ideas of you know turning that into some kind of plant or flowers and stuff up there and then sitting there so I think it's pretty cool but anyway I've rambled on and on if uh, you have any questions about anything with a small horse farm or equipment that I use then uh you know drop me a note I'm happy to uh, spend some time on that and, uh, and I'll communicate with you directly. So I, I appreciate that. I like to help people and I like for people to help me and give me ideas about how to make things better uh, for a small small farm or on, uh, or on a you know, large rural tract of land. So thank you all for watching.